my channel if you're new here i'm felicia and today we are talking about junior year <laughs> this can be a very daunting time for people because everyone's like oh my gosh junior year sucks this was a year from hell like so much stuff i was so stressed every it, they're not lying <laughs> it's a tough year but I'm gonna give you some tips that are things that I wish I knew or things that I just, I think are good to have in mind going into junior year. Okay, so let's get right into the tips. So number one is to prioritize your mental health, okay? I just prefaced this video by saying it's going to be a stressful year. I'm not going to lie to you. It is a very tough year, just, with the amount of stuff that you have to get done, all the testing, the classes being probably the hardest of the classes you'll take in high school, trying to navigate your extracurriculars and finalizing like a college list and all that stuff. It can be a lot cumulative and just a lot all at once. Pow, pow, pow. But with that being said, there are good times. Okay, let me not say there are not, there are good times in the year but the thing is is that when you are feeling down on your luck when you feel like banging your head on a wall you are in a hallway bathroom sobbing just like holding in your tears can barely function do not just wallow that all in and be like i'm fine don't do that because although it may feel easier to just suppress your feelings and all the stress and stuff it's really not helping you because you have all the stressful weight of things that you're dealing with and then you have the weight of all the emotion and like the strain on your mental health that you're also holding by not talking it through and trying to get help to get through it in a more efficient way okay so acknowledge when you're not okay it's okay to not be okay but it's what you do once you're there. Are you gonna just let yourself self-destruct and feel broken for a whole year? Or are you going to find that teacher, find that guidance counselor, find that friend, comrade, parent, church leader, sport, le sport coach, or whatever, whoever else, and talk through what is bothering you and allow them to actually support you. Find coping mechanisms, healthy coping mechanisms to get through the tough times. So don't ignore how you're feeling and just suppress it because it'll only make the situation worse and make your mental health awful worse in the long run. So tying into that just a little bit, my next tip for you would be to build strong relationships with your teachers and guidance counselors and for one your junior teachers and guidance counselor which most people have a same guidance counselor for all four years but those people are the ones who you're gonna have to go back to to get recommendations for when you're doing college applications and if you didn't form a relationship with not one of your teachers to the point where they can write something with substance about your character who you were and just what you were about other than just looking back at your grade book and being like yeah i mean they didn't do anything bad but not be able to say really anything unique to you to leverage you with that recommendation letter it can be a lot more difficult for it to be a strong letter of recommendation that will stand out amongst the rest because their college admissions is where you're gonna get all your grades and what the school was like and really get a good idea of who you were as a student or numerically by your transcript alone. They wanna know about you as a student, you as a person beyond that, which is why they get the recommendation from your guys counselor and teachers of your choice so just be mindful how you treat them for one because no one likes a disrespectful kid ever whether it's they're gonna write you recommendation or not be respectful but also 
make sure that you're doing something for them to remember you in a good way <laughs> you know okay and then also not just recommendations but also what we were talking about before with having those people in your corner that you can go to when times are tough when you build that relationship with your teacher your guidance counselor before things get real stressful and crazy it's a lot easier for you to be vulnerable and go to them when things are slipping through the cracks and you need that help to get yourself back up standing firm and strong ready to go at it okay so my next tip for you guys is to take advantage of any free SAT ACT opportunities that your school gives you because for one it's free and these are usually earlier opportunities than when most people go to pay to take it so if you can knock it out and get those good scores that you're happy with from earlier then it's not something that you're gonna have to continue worrying about with that being said the way to get that done is by making sure you're prepared prepare for those SAT ACT school days that they give you you're gonna see a bunch of kids who are in your classes be like oh it's fine it's whatever I'm not gonna study for that I don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna show up I think I might just skip the day no don't be that kid if you don't know when the test is gonna happen go ask somebody find out go to the front office talk to your guidance counselor talk to your principal find out when the days are going to be so you can plan out when you're going to prep for it so you're ready for when it comes up and just put your best foot forward to do the best that you can on it and with you also taking the psat for merit scholarship during your junior year mindset is half of the battle you need to be confident within yourself and in your ability so that when it's test day you don't have any worries in your head i don't think i maybe i should have prepped maybe oh well, i don't know how to do this i'm scared what if this comes up on the test or i'm so incompetent you can't let those things get into your head before you take a test because it will mess you up you will second guess yourself you will run out of time and you're just not gonna get the score you want so do yourself a favor and be prepared but then also do yourself a favor and get your mind right before you take any big tests the next piece of advice i'm going to give you is to be intentional with having sources of joy okay because i know friends and partially me who they would tell you that their junior year wasn't very fun because they were too busy with how much they had inflated their schedule with AP classes and all the extracurriculars that they didn't really care about but took up so much time and just those are joy suckers okay but some of it is necessary okay you do need some things not everything that we need to do is going to always be fun you know and there's a whole way to work around that and just having the right mindset so that you can go in even those situations with a degree of gratitude but that's not what we're talking about here i'm talking about scheduling in time to do any activity whatever it is for you that is going to bring you joy is going to relieve you of stress of this crazy school year and just help you decompress and bring you bring a smile to your face bring a laugh to your face and so whether that is breaking in time to join a club that is really unique and interesting and you're like whoa and if there's a club that you want at your school or a concept of a club that you want at your school and it's not there build it okay same as plug i did it you can do it if you feel strongly about something and you it's a passion of yours go right for it you know whether it's building a youtube channel whether it's joining a sports team whether it's serving the community is delve into that on a deeper level and if you aren't really sure what you're passionate about experiment with different things if you try something and you end up hating it well then scratch that and try something new something else that you need junior is sleep and that brings me into my next tip is that sleep is cool okay 
that is the tip sleep is cool there are so many people who will tell you that they pulled a million and one all-nighters but i don't remember the last time i slept a overnight i think i probably slept three hours a night every single night during junior year okay is it abnormal to pull one or two all-nighters during junior year no it may be three or four uh no not very abnormal but it is abnormal to never sleep <laughs> that is a choice and even with the most rigorous schedule something i valued was my sleep because i knew if i didn't get sleep i was gonna be productive the next day which then i was just gonna be more stressed the next day when i couldn't grasp anything the teacher and it was just gonna be a cycle the biggest problem i see with people who say that they never slept is that they kept on pushing off pushing off their work later and later into the night and obviously they're not gonna not do the work so they have part of their day when there's still daylight out clear but they just chill they just do nothing productive with that time and so then between the hours of 10 to 4 they're getting everything else done that they could have been doing between the hours of like 2 to 4 and obviously people have like after school stuff and so everyone's schedule might be a little different but the point is if you have open time earlier in the day use that very wisely and schedule yourself to where you have your time to doing your homework and don't just push off push off later at night because then you are going to be pulling a million one all-nighters if every night you're not doing starting any of your homework until 10 11 o'clock then and most of your assignments are due at 10 59 anyway so that's even more stressful because then you have like only an hour to do all your work if you started at 10 and then everything else is late and then it's like you could have done it earlier and been on time so value your sleep do whatever you have to do to make sure that you're getting your sleep because it's just gonna make the whole process a lot harder when you're tired <sighs> tired people are just not as productive not as efficient not as nice <laughs> um it's just facts so yeah sleep is cool get your sleep junior year is not the year to start compromising your sleep and on the topic of taking care of yourself my next tip for you is to advocate for yourself and i want to preface this by saying there's a difference between advocating for yourself and making excuses for yourself okay so advocating for yourself is when you've already built the status quo the norm that you are a respectful student you are responsible you get your stuff done okay and something is happening like whether you're just overwhelmed whether something went down or whatever it is and it just made one of those just slip through the cracks a little bit and you acknowledge that what happened and where you're falling short and looking for someone to help you in order to get back on track right so that's something that you realize wow this happened i don't really want to be like this anymore and you are going to go talk to a teacher you're going to go talk to a counselor and tell them what is going on and that you want to get better and they're going to help you make a plan and get yourself back together and you're going to get back in the groove of it and you're going to be doing awesome making an excuse is either building having built that character for yourself and then continually just slip through the cracks slip through the cracks slip through the cracks and not doing anything to rectify and correct it even when you know there's an issue or when you're disrespectful you don't get your stuff done and you're just not doing what you're supposed to be doing okay and then you're trying to go to the teacher and be like oh but this but that but that <laughs> so there is a difference that is my <laughs> point teachers Care about you most teachers do care about your well-being and they do care about your success and they love a student who 
is willing to be like, hey, I did not understand a word you said this last hour or that homework that you gave me, I'm 100% sure that I got an F on it because I just didn't understand it. I tried my hardest and I just, I felt incompetent, couldn't do it. You know, whatever it is, being able to acknowledge that and tell them and be like, I need help, they will bend over backwards, do whatever they can to help you, right? They will go before, after school, to go over tests, help you with the homework, explain a lesson deeper. They will help you make a plan, a schedule, to get you back on track if you're just overwhelmed with all the things you have to do. But they don't know the extent of your issue if you're not willing to advocate for yourself and explain to them what's going on. It can be daunting at times, it can be like pride crusher, but it's worth it because at the end of the day, you want to be successful and so do the people that you're going in to talk with they're not there to make fun of you be like ha, you don't have it together <laughs> what is wrong with you they like, no, they're really there to support you and get you back on the right track so that you can reach all the goals and amazingness that you are going to achieve and off of that i'm going to give you my last tip which is it's okay to be alone, feel alone. It's okay. Okay. You're like, oh, oh, <laughs> why, why are you saying that, Belly? Like, why? No. <laughs> but the thing is, high school people change a lot. And whether it's you losing your ride or die best friend, getting dropped by your friend group, or moving from one school to another school or if you just feel like a popular loner whatever your situation is and why you feel alone why you feel like no one's really got you or whatever it is it's okay because for one a lot of people are evolving and changing within themselves during high school so you fall in and out of friendships and that's just life and there is something valuable about one i think learning how to be sufficient alone and not always needing to be around people it's awesome to have friends and i'm not telling you to make yourself isolated and alone but what i'm saying is that if you feel like you are in a season you feel like alone there is value to learning how to have joy with yourself and with the situation that you're in and there's usually a reason why whether it's something that you really are supposed to be focusing so deeply on or it's like a change within you in which you've outgrown the people that you were around and the one thing i would really hope for everyone watching this is that you don't compromise who you are, your morals and your values for friends. I've seen it happen so many times where people change and conform to something that they're not because of their fear of being alone. And you will not be alone forever. You are an awesome person and you are going to find the most dope people in the world who are gonna be your ride or dies at your wedding, like going on an awesome trips together all that stuff but sometimes those people don't come in high school if they seem to not come in high school for you don't rush it and engage in fake friendships that are only going to compromise your character and break down who you are just for their temporary existence in your life because if you're changing to be something that you're not for them there will be a time when you get tired of it or it, there's a line that you just won't cross and you're gonna lose them and that's gonna be an emotional stress on you anyways and the thing is is that when you're being your most authentic self and you're growing into being who you are and really being able to stand firm to what you believe in and the type of person you want to be you are going to attract that same energy and those same types of people and your friends your comrades ride or dies 
they are going to come and they're going to be the ones that are actually meant to be in your life because they're going to be about the same things that you're about so yeah be nice to people you never know like who's going to be who in your life and who's going to be who in the world and you just don't understand how you being nice to one person can like really affect them on such a bigger level than you would ever know just like the time that you open the door, the day you smiled at someone or you said you love somebody's outfit, how much that could really stick with them and bring them so much joy more than you ever expected to. So be that person and just heed all the advice that I've given you that you want to and I know that each and every one of you going to junior year are going to rock it. It's going to be amazing and just don't forget to have fun and reach out for support and you are going to do awesome things and thanks for watching stay tuned for more content by me um you can subscribe best way to do that uh i hope you enjoyed this video found it helpful and see you guys next time